I greet you in the name of Jesus. Welcome. Will you please pray with me? Our Lord, we are here in person and online to worship you this morning. We ask that you fill us with your love as we worship you through our words, songs, and actions. May everything we do this morning be glorifying to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, again, good morning. My name is Sean McShell. I'm the pastor of Fresh Expressions here at Nicholasville United Methodist Church. And we are glad that you're joining us for our worship service today, whether you are online or you're here with us in person. We are glad that you're here. Now, hopefully you saw the announcements scrolling before the service up on the screen or, or on your computer screen. You can find out what is going on in the life of the church through those announcements. Those are also on our Facebook page. So make sure to be uh, checking that up regularly to find out what's happening in the life of our community of faith here at Nicholasville. Now, you please join together with me for our call to worship. It's coming from Psalm 33 verses 1 through 5 and 20 and 22. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. For the work of the Lord is upright, and all, the, all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. I invite you to stand now as we worship God in song. We'll start off this service today with the hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's all sing together. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning.
was covered in sin and shame. I heard mercy call my name. He rolled the stone away. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, every fear is gone. I know he holds my life, my future in his hand. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Amen.
be seated. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Friends, it is good to be in worship together today. My name is Pastor Wade, and we're glad you're with us, whether online joining us or live in person. Good to be in our worship time together today. This is the part of the service where we prepare our hearts to go into a moment of prayer. I want to share a couple of concerns with you and some praises with you, and then uh, lead together in a prayer time. We'll end out that prayer time together uh, saying the Lord's Prayer. So that's kind of where we're going here in the next few moments. You might notice um, some additional flowers here uh, up on the table, up here on the chancel area. Um, those are from a couple of families who had uh, some, some deaths, some funerals in the family. One of those uh, was from the family of Margie King. Uh, we hosted Margie's funeral here uh, last week on Thursday. And the other flowers are from Jean and June Williamson on the death of their son, Jean Jr. So many of the uh, flowers here, uh, they're beautiful, uh, but they're reminding us of a, of, a, of a passing. And we want to lift up those families and certainly all the, their circle of friends and relations. Uh, lift them up in our prayers uh, today as well. Uh, one of the uh, regular members of our, our praise team, uh, the other guitar player, the, the guy named Vince Lou Ellen, who uh, sings and plays and leads worship. Vince is going to be having some surgery later this week on Wednesday, and uh, Vince will be in uh, several weeks of recovery after that surgery. So we, we lift Vince up in our prayers um, as well today. <clears throat> on the announcement loop, you may have noticed a, a slide saying uh, that we are looking for some additional singers uh, for the choir, for our, our praise group, uh, other musicians, instrumentalists, uh, if you uh, want to come talk to us about that, we'd love to incorporate some new members. Please reach out to myself, uh, the church office, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of get you some information. Um, we need more people to kind of help lead us and uh, make a joyful noise to the Lord. So if uh, that's a skill set you have, an aspiration you have, uh, or God is prompting your heart, let us know. We'd love to talk with you more about that. Also, just in case you haven't looked at the calendar, next week, next Sunday to be specific, is Mother's Day. So just uh, fellas, kids, just families, just FYI, that's coming up. So just remember, just remember, that's coming up. Uh, also, next Sunday, uh, not necessarily related to Mother's Day, but next Sunday we're going to have a special announcement. Um, probably, as most of you know by now, there was an announcement, oh gosh, came out in February, where uh, our bishop is moving me to Western Kentucky to be a district superintendent of the Penny Ryle District. Um, so we've been kind of processing that. Next Sunday, we're going to actually get the announcement of who will be the incoming pastor here for Nicholasville. So stay tuned. We'll be excited to share that news uh, next Sunday with you as well. So for, for this and all these other matters, uh, illnesses and deaths in the families and surgeries and, and transition, please uh, remember your church in prayer. Uh, this day and the next day and the next day after that. We have a big God who knows our hearts and knows our needs and even knows before we ask what's going on in our lives. So we have this confidence and this assurance to go to God and pour open our hearts and our lives uh, to just be real with God. Um, he wants that conversation. He wants to draw us close to Him, and prayer is one of the ways in which we do that. So friends, let's prepare our hearts and approach the throne of grace as we pray together this morning in Jesus' name. Would you join me as we pray in Jesus' name? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you, and we celebrate and praise you this day. Thank you for your love, and thank you for your grace. Thank you for your care for us this day. Lord, wherever we are today, whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through this season of life, help us to remember and help us to recognize deep in our hearts 
that we are not alone. Remind us, Lord, that you are truly present in our moments of trial. Lord, you ease our burdens. You assure us of your presence. Lord, your steadfast love remains at all times. And Father, we share a common hope, a hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Today, as we come in worship, we cast before you our fears, our doubts, our burdens, and our anxieties. Today, as we come to worship before you, we confess that you and you alone are God, and we are not. That you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. And that at the utterance of your name, all creatures under heaven and earth will bow in awe and reverence of who you are. Today, Father, come to us and be a light in our darkness. Give us the grace, Lord, to be patient and wait upon your will for us. Give us the wisdom, Lord, to save us from false choices. And Father, help us to be obedient and faithful in all things. Make our paths straight so we will not stumble or falter as we seek to follow you. Heal us and restore us. Comfort us, strengthen us, uphold us, and remind us of your great, great love. All these things we ask and all these things we offer back now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we take time now to remember the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when together they prayed by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen.
Julian, Debbie, thank you so much. Today's scripture reading comes from two passages in the book of Hebrews. First one, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, and then chapter 11, 17 to 24. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. And from Hebrews 11. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told, It is through Isaac the descendants shall be named for you. He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions about his burial. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sean, for that reading. And to our ensemble, thank you all for leading us in music today. That was a beautiful, beautiful word, beautiful melody. Thank you. Need to make a uh, disclaimer, a confession here this morning. Um, There's normally a clock in the sanctuary that you can't see, but I'm supposed to be able to see. And that clock is not functioning this morning, and there's a story behind that, which I'm just not going to tell you, because I did it. Um... So, I've alerted the tech booth to give me like a little countdown if this gets to go in long. So, uh, you might want to thank them if I just get to rambling here. They're, they're going to wave at me and do a little dance back there to make sure I see. So, normally I have a clock to kind of check off the time. So, j- just a disclaimer, okay? Just, just, just so you know. Also, just a reminder that uh, today is a first Sunday Communion Sunday, which means in just a few moments, I promise I'm not going to preach that long, in just a few moments we're going to celebrate Holy Communion together. And for those who want to participate, there are these uh, prepackaged communion uh, cups with a wafer and juice, and they are in the back of the sanctuary, in the side of the sanctuary, on some tables. If you didn't get one of those, uh, you still can grab one uh, in the next few moments before our communion time. So just a, just a word there. Let's, uh, let's pray once again and go to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. We thank you for music, and Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather 
in person and through technology, and be present to worship you in spirit and in truth. We humble our hearts. We seek to draw close to you, Lord. Speak to us and move in our hearts and our lives and our world today. It's in Jesus' mighty name we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen. Friends, today and for the next handful of weeks, we are beginning uh, a new kind of short-term uh, message theme or message series entitled The Handoff, The Handoff. And uh, it kind of has to do with the idea of transitions. And today is a brief overview of kind of where we're going over the next few weeks. So we're not going to get in too deep, but just kind of highlights and kind of give an overarching sense of this idea of, of biblical and God-honoring and people-blessing transitions. So the big idea, in case you're wondering, is this. God is with us in the midst of transition. Say it with me. God is with us in the midst of transition. Okay, that's the sermon, so we can go ahead and go to communion now, right? That, that really is the big idea. God is with us in the midst of transitions. Think about your own life right now. Think about the last year. How many transitions have we been through? Wow, pandemic. We're still kind of transitioning through that. Uh, graduation just happened at some colleges and universities. Other graduations are happening soon. Kids are moving up a grade in school. We've had some deaths in our congregation, in our, our family of faith. Soon there's going to be some pastoral and some staff and volunteer transitions and, and many, many other transitions on many, many different levels. The truth is, transitions happening all the time. And from a biblical point of view, this is actually a, a normal thing. And the good news, the good news is that God wants to be with us in the midst of all these transitions. So as God's people, what we want to try to do is kind of approach the Bible and seek the heart of God on how, how do we do this proactively, positively, in a biblically honoring way, in a God-honoring way, that helps us live out our faithfulness and helps us bless others. And we get to see God moving in our hearts and lives, in our midst, through this and whatever other transition might be happening in our lives right now. Let me tell you a couple of stories that we're going to use as illustrations here in a few moments. And um, I know this is going to be shocking to some of you uh, when you think of my athletic physique right now. But there was a time many years ago when I was actually in great shape and could run all day long. How many believe that? Nobody. Okay, I see that. Okay. Back uh, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th grade, I ran track for my school, uh, Northeastern Kentucky, a little school called Russell, Russell Independent Schools. And 8th uh, grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade years, I was on uh, some of the relay teams. I was not really a sprinter, not really a long-distance runner, but kind of in the middle. I ran the 800, I ran the two-mile relay, which was four people passing a baton and, and running uh, 800, half a mile, basically. And uh, let me tell you about the worst race and the best race ever had doing the two-mile relay of the 800. And again, uh, I was a little lighter then, moved a little faster then. Sophomore year, I was, I don't know what, 14, 15 years old. Our high school was uh, hosting a large invitational track meet. There's probably 15, 16 different schools there. Our track team was big. We had a great coach. We were actually pretty good. That year, sophomore year, our track team, including my relay race, went to state. Now, I got sick the week before. I didn't get to go to state, but our team did really well. So the best meet we ever had, my best meet ever, was at this large invitational track meet. I ran several of the open races, but the two-mile relay, four of us running half a mile each, this was kind of our, our big thing. Our coach loved relay races. We had to win the relays. So this particular day, our coach reordered us. The number one guy wasn't the number one guy. We, he kind of re, he messed up the order for whatever reason I don't know. The guy who led off for us, who, by the way, got a college scholarship to run track, he was a good runner, um, he led off for us, and by the time his two laps were over, he was almost at the end of the pack. This particular day, I was the number two runner. As we were doing that baton handoff, as he was handing the baton off to me, our coach was yelling, Wade, Wade, you've got to pass the next two guys. Two laps to pass two guys. Go. So in my half a mile, I caught two guys and passed them. I handed off the baton. The next guy caught two more guys, passed them. 
handed off the baton. The third guy, the last guy, the fourth guy, I should say, passed everybody, and we won, we won that particular race. There was great rejoicing. Our splits that day, this is where you should be really impressed. As, as best I can remember, our splits that day were 228, 205, 203, and 152. I ran the 205. If you double that, that means I ran almost a four minute, 10 second mile. You should be impressed. <laughs> Can't do that now, uh-uh, no way. That was our best race as a track team. Our worst race came very quickly after that, maybe a week or so later. We were running at a neighboring school's track meet and uh, I, I already asked permission, Doug, I'm gonna call you out, man. Greenup County, that was one of our rival schools. Doug and I grew up in the same area, Doug Howland. Doug is here sitting in the back. He's far enough where he can't throw anything at me when I tell this story. Uh, anyway, we went to a, a track meet at Greenup County, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we won most of that meet. However, we were kind of goofing off, kind of slacking that day. And even though we did well winning at Greenup County, our coach was not happy. So the very next day at our track practice, he lined us all up on the bleachers at the football stadium, and he basically chewed us out for about 10 minutes, how we weren't paying attention, weren't giving our best effort, weren't trying hard enough, right? We kind of got the dress down. Now, <laughs> one of our coach's favorite, let's say, motivational devices not punishment, but motivational therapy, let's call it, was this exercise called a grasshopper. Anybody know grasshoppers? Okay, this is fun. So what you would do is he would line us all up on the 100 yards, the, the, the length of a football field. So he, he'd give you a, a, a yard. So I'd be on like the 25-yard uh, line facing the other side's bench, right? We'd all line up the length of the football field. You'd drop down to your knees, Put your hands behind your head, lock your fingers, and then drop down on your elbows. In a certain period of time, you had to kind of wiggle your way all the way across the football field and all the way back. I asked one time why they were called grasshoppers because we weren't jumping or hopping. He said, no, no, your nose is in the grass. You're looking for grasshoppers. I said, oh, oh, oh I get it. After this particular meet, I thought we were going to have some motivational therapy of doing grasshoppers. That was kind of one of our coach's favorite uh, tools, shall we say. But he didn't do that. Instead, he called every single relay team, including ours, down on the track, and he said, all of y'all lost your jobs, and today you've got to recompete for your positions. He called all kinds of people down. We had to run every relay race and regain our spot. Now, our particular team, we got our spots back, Whew. but lesson learned. Coach didn't like us messing around. One of the things that was unique about our coach was that he loved the relay races. And I think the reason for that was this, and there's a point to all this, so hang with me. To win a relay race, you've got to have great individual effort. You're part of the race. You've got to go all out. But those races are won and lost, guess, on the handoff. As you hand off the baton, if you do it well, you maintain time and move forward. If you bobble the handoff, you lose time. If you drop the baton, you're disqualified. In the relay races, they're won and lost with the handoff. And man, we practice those a lot. And guess what happened when we didn't get them right? Grasshoppers. Lots of good motivation, right? You get the idea. The race, the relays anyway, are won and lost in the handoff. But hold that thought. The scripture we read today was kind of a part one, part two. The first image is a track image, running a race with a great cloud of witnesses. Sean read that for us. And the other image is the image of a handoff. And I'll explain this here real quick. It turns out in the Bible, many places, not just here, links the idea of faith and perseverance with, with running a race. So Hebrews 12, obviously we just read that. But did you know Paul talks about it too? In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain it? He's talking about faith, not just running, but faith and perseverance. 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul says this, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have won the prize. Maybe you remember this one from the Old Testament, Isaiah 40. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run 
and mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. You see, the Bible has this amazing way of hearkening and likening faith to endurance and running and not giving up. But it's not just about our individual part of the race. There's something bigger, right? Hebrews talks about the great cloud of witnesses and this idea of us running our faith and being surrounded by the saints who've gone before us and they're encouraging us and cheering us on. And that big image reminds us that it's not just about us, our time, our place, our generation. There's something bigger going on here. God has a bigger plan. God has a a bigger will than just my life and just your life here and now. When When you think about that, that really reframes transitions, right? It's not just about me, not just about you, not just about now. There's a bigger overarching thing happening. And then the other passage Sean read from Hebrews 11, imagine, I know it's kind of funny, but imagine those names that Sean read about as runners on the track. Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, Moses. They were great leaders in their time. But God's plan went beyond Abraham and unfolded in the life of Isaac. There was a baton pass, a handoff from one generation to the next. And then after Isaac, there was God's faithfulness to to Jacob and his family in that generation. And then on to Joseph and so on and so forth. There's this picture of this unfolding of God's plan, God's faithfulness in the lives of real people, real generations. And while they were faithful to him and he was faithful to them, at the end of their life, at the end of their time of service, you might say, the baton passed to the next generation and the next and the next. This is biblical. This makes a lot of sense. And this is part of how the people of God have operated for a long, long time. You see, it turns out the Bible is full of stories of transition. Many are really good and really positive, and there's a few maybe not so good. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at some of those. But today, let me just reintroduce you quickly to how it all started. In Genesis, God made a covenant with Abraham. Abraham and his wife Sarah did not have any family, any children. And God basically made a a threefold covenant, a promise, that they would have descendants, they would have land, and they would be blessed and be a blessing. And over time, that promise unfolded. And then God honored that promise in the next generation. And then in the next generation. And then in the next generation, God kept that covenant promise. They kept that covenant promise with God, kind of like handing the baton off generation to generation. And they got to see God's faithfulness. It's an amazing thing. Well, fast forward to the book of Exodus. The Pharaoh didn't know the people of God anymore. God raises up Moses. Moses helps deliver the people in the wilderness. And God does another covenant Now with Moses, not replacing the first covenant, but extending it. How are you to live now that you're a freed people living in the wilderness? How are you to be the people of God, unique and shaped for his purpose? And then that covenant passes on to to Joshua. And these great words where God speaks to Joshua and Moses and says, do not be afraid. In the same way that I was with Moses, Joshua, I'm now going to be with you. And God passes that baton down to the next generation. There's a powerful story in 2 Kings of the great prophet Elijah, who passes the mantle to his protege, Elisha, right? This transition time. There's other stories as well. And time after time, we see that God was faithful to his promises, and God was faithful to his people, especially in those times of transition. Friends, all the things we have going on in our hearts and our lives, the Bible is this book of record, of faithfulness, God making promises, God keeping promises, and God's people resting on those promises. Friends, we can claim that too. Now, that's the good news. Here's the bad news. Sometimes, eh, sometimes, There were a few places where the transitions didn't go so well. Again, you can read back in the book of Kings, and a a pattern would unfold, and the pattern would go something like this. A new king would be anointed, and that new king would decide that he wanted to follow his own plan, his own desires, his own design. He wasn't really going to honor God or remember God. And if you read the stories, don't just take my word for it, go back and read them. What would happen is trouble would ensue very quickly. And not only would the king find himself in trouble, 
But because the king represented the people, the people will be in trouble too. Isn't that crazy? Because the leader got it wrong, the people suffered. Whew, that was a bad deal. And then a new king would come along and try to honor God, and the, the pendulum would swing back the other way. But you can read a lot of the historical books and see this pattern unfolding. As they honored God, things would go well. If they didn't honor God, man, people would suffer. There's a pattern, there's a, there's a theme going on here. And through it all, the simple idea was that God is going to be with his people in and through those transitions. As a church, we've been transitioning through pandemic, and it's not been easy. We have some servant leaders who are transitioning out of our congregation for different reasons. We have some staff changes. We have some senior pastor changes happening, and that can feel like a lot. But if you reframe it as God has been in this business of leading his people through transitions for a long time, we can take comfort and be assured that we're going to be just fine. God's going to be faithful to us in and through this transition. So what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks is this. We're going to look at some specific stories and pick apart the ways that God's people were faithful and specifically then how God was faithful to his people and blessed them in very difficult transition situations. For example, we're going to look at the story of Ruth and Naomi. Tough story. Look at the story of Gideon. Look at the story of Paul and the elders of Ephesus. Look at the story of Moses and Joshua, of Esther and Mordecai. And each and every time, we're going to see God's people seeking to be faithful to him and God honoring that faithfulness and blessing them unimaginably in and through those transitions. Hebrews 12 today reminds us that we're not alone. Believers who've gone before us have led the way. They handed the baton off to us in our time and generation. And as we run with faithfulness, they're cheering us on. And yeah, there comes a time to pass off the baton to the next leader, the next generation. And through it all, God is going to be faithful. That's good news. One more thought. Here in just a few moments, we're going to celebrate liturgy for Holy Communion. Think about Jesus. As he was transitioning towards the cross, towards the tomb, then rising from the tomb and ultimately ascending into glory, Jesus gave us some very specific words and a very specific sign act, a sacrament, bread and cup to remind us of his grace and his faithfulness and his promise that he's always going to be with us. We celebrate that here in just a few moments. As we go through transition or any part of life, think about the hope and the joy that we can take from that promise that Jesus is going to be with us now and the next day and the next day. The bread and the cup remind us of sacrifice, remind us of faithfulness, remind us of grace, and remind us of that invitation to trust him more. Friends, what do you think? I think now is the time. Let's trust him even more. Pray with me. Almighty God, we gather in these moments and we admit, Lord, that the assurance of your unfailing love enables us and gives us strength to face difficult days and, and questions and even seasons of transition. Lord, may we not be tempted to become our own Savior at this point but remind us that Jesus is our one and only Savior, and we place our trust and our hope in his hands. Lord, may your word dwell deeply within us. May your peace rule in our hearts. And Lord, may you find us faithful in all things, the big things, the little things, and handing off the baton in transition. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. It's in his mighty and awesome and powerful name we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to invite you to join me in a short liturgy, preparing our hearts to receive and celebrate Holy Communion. And again, we'll be using the little prepackaged communion sets here in just a moment. I believe some of the words will be on the, the screen, the wall behind me. And uh, as you're able, please follow along with me as we prepare our hearts to receive the bread and the cup. 
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Pray with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim now the mystery of faith. Say it with me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry in all the world until Christ comes in victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. If you would, go ahead and peel back the, the first layer there, the first wrapper, revealing the wafer. Remember the gift of Jesus. Take and eat and be thankful. Thanks be to God. Carefully pull back the, the next wrapper, the next layer there. Opening up the, the cup to reveal the, the grape juice. Remember the love of Christ. Take and drink and be thankful. Thanks be to God. Pray with me one more time. Almighty God, for this, your Son Jesus, we give you thanks for forgiveness, for reconciliation, for new life and new hope, a new beginning through Christ. We praise your name, we receive this blessing, and we recommit ourselves, our hearts, our lives to live for you once again. Lord, as people look and see us, may they catch a glimpse of you because Jesus is our Lord, Jesus is our Savior, and he's the one we're trying to be more like. We offer ourselves back to you as a gift. Lord, use us and bless us to be a blessing to somebody else. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we ask and pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. As we close out our worship service, let's rise and sing the hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. The words will be up here on the wall for you. Faith of Our Fathers.
God's people said. Amen. You know, maybe that clock thing is not a bad thing because we got done early today. Maybe we should just leave that down. We'll have to think about that. Friends, we're glad you worship with us today, whether in person uh, or online. Blessings to you. Let's worship again next Sunday. Uh, just a quick word before our final prayer, our closing benediction. We're going to invite our ushers to help those of us in person kind of get out of here in a safe and orderly manner. So be watching for their guidance and instruction here in just a moment. And again, uh, come worship with us again next Sunday. Let's celebrate the love of God each and every week as we are able. Hear these words read and prayed over us from Psalm 33. Pray with me. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and He is our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice. For we trust in His holy name. Lord, may Your unfailing love be with us even as we put all our hope in You. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit we ask and pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, friends. Go in peace.